Hello and welcome to Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee High School for tonight's matchup between the Elida Bulldogs and the Shawnee Indians. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skillender. And Evan, we got a great matchup on tap tonight between two schools. It's a rivalry game. They're looking to carry some momentum into tournament play. But we all love sports. And one of the things that we love about sports is that sometimes it gets to play the backdrop to something bigger. And that's what's happening tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Shawnee senior Jordan Banks diagnosed with cancer recently. And what's been really cool is to see not just the Shawnee community come together, but all of Allen County, all of the WBL. You'll see both coaches, entire coaching staff wearing the t-shirts tonight that you can see on us as well. And it's just been really cool. Like you said, there are things that are bigger than sports, but sports can certainly bring people together. And that's what we have tonight. Now make no mistake about it. Both of these teams want to come away with the victory tonight. So let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game. Yeah, and tonight's key is a, a little bit different than normal. The first one's toughness, and I want to read a quote. It says, Jordan is funny, caring, and loving kid who never fails to put a smile on your face. But most importantly, he's a friend, a brother. Everyone at school loves him. He's one of the toughest and strongest kids I know. This unfortunate event that happened is a minor setback for a major comeback. Everyone in the community loves him and is praying for him. I love you too. We love you, Jordan. Hashtag bank strong. That comes from Chase Beery. Our next key is strength. This quote says, Jordan never fails to take an average day to a great day. He makes everyone feel seen. Whenever I see him, he always gives me a hug and asks how I'm doing. Jay Baby is one of the funniest kids I know, and this is an unfortunate event. Jordan is stronger than this, and everyone knows that. We love you, Jordan. Keep your head high. Everyone knows this has nothing on you. That's Kira Vermillion. And our last one, togetherness. This quote says, as many of you know, senior Jordan Banks is fighting a tough battle right now. As the whole community comes together to show our support, we want Jordan to know that we love him and we have his back through it all. Keep your head up, Jordan, from his good friend, Shandon Sewell. So we have two rivalries, uh, two rivalry teams in the gym tonight. It is jam-packed. Community has come out to support Jordan, but also they want to support their team to come away with the victory. When we return, we'll have tonight's starters in the opening tip on WOSN. Hello and welcome back to Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee High School. Take a look at tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Tonight's starters are being introduced. We will take a look at them as well, starting first with the visiting Elida Bulldogs. They're going to start at number two, Tori Thomas. Number 31, David Etzcorn. Number 22, Bryce Angle. Number zero, Zori Island. And number 13, Jackson Kovalt. For the Shawnee Indians, it is senior night here at Lapham Gymnasium, and they are going to start five of their seniors. Number three, Zach Noonan. Number 30, Sage Ebling. Number 24, Brady Gavis, number zero, Will McBride, and number five, Toby Freiberger. Tonight's officials, Eric Dickey, Bryce Bailey, and Kyle Ray will be working the whistles. And as the cheerleaders are be being announced by uh, for both teams as well, we're going to have the teams out on the floor here in uh, just a second. You know, Evan, we talked a lot in the in the pregame about everything kind of surrounding the game tonight. But when you look at this game itself, this is a big game. It's a double B WBL matchup. It is a rivalry game. Both of these communities get up for these games, football, basketball, baseball, anything, soccer, whatever they play each other in. This is a big deal just when it's the game itself. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like These two teams don't have a whole lot on the line. Neither are trying for the WBL title. Obviously, tournaments coming up very soon. But you look at Elida, they come into tonight 8-13, and 13, coached by Matt Tabler. And across the board for them, not any really high scores. Zori Island's going to handle the ball a lot for them. He averages 10.4 points per game, can also light it up from outside. But really a balanced effort across the scoreboard. And for Shawnee, they come into tonight 9-12, and 3-5 and in the Western Buckeye League. Of course, coached by Mark Triplett, who's been here for multiple years. And they have three guys averaging double figures in scoring. You look at Will McBride, 12.1 points per game. He shoots 33% from outside. Beckett Burke, just a freshman, a really fun player to watch and a player that I can't wait to watch develop through his four years. He averages 11.6 points per game. He's tall as well. He stands at six foot three. 
but he's going to continue to grow, and he can do a lot inside, outside from the free throw line, and he plays great defense as well. And then, of course, their senior leader, the leading scorer on this team, Austin Miller, 13.7 points per game. Tremendous athlete. If you watch soccer, the Indians, a uh, state champion, and he was an All-American in the entire country, right? Like, All-American means entire country, folks, and this is one of the best athletes all around that you will see and a tremendous ball player. So we have a lot of good players out there. And like you said, on rivalry night, hey, you could be, neither of you could have a win this season and you're still gonna get up and get really excited for a game like this. Yeah, and he talks about, you know, you lie to Coach Tabler. They've taken a big step forward compared to last year, just a two win campaign a season ago. You know, even though still not quite that winning record, he has that team moving up. You know they'd like to finish the season strong and carry some of that momentum into tournament play. Shawnee, an up and down season, you know, uh, a pretty recent, you know, they've lost, I believe it's nine of their last 11. They had a big loss last week to Wayne Trace, but the night before, a big win by Kenton. I think the big thing that Shawnee is looking for right now is some consistency in those scores and getting a little bit more help on defense. These two teams met way back at the tip-off classic back in December, and that one was a victory by Elida as they started the season off 2-0. Uh, two and, oh, and, you know, that was a game. I, I was there. Shawnee was up big. Elida, though, just didn't go away. Kept coming, kept coming. Grew up a lot in that game. And ta after talking to Coach Tabler at the end of that game, you could tell he was happy with the effort, but he knew his team had to take a lot of steps forward. And we'll be able to see tonight how much of that growth actually happened. The opening tip was controlled by Shawnee, but a turnover. As you see number 13, Jackson Kovalt go up, hesitation, and gets it in for two. Nice finish by Kovalt right there through two defenders right off the steal. That's a good start for Elida. Yeah, Elida's seven and six non-conference record this year, but unfortunately just one and seven in the Western Buckeye League. Long pass up ahead trying to find Will McBride. Didn't go out of bounds. Last touch by Kovalt will stay with the Indians. I like the early pressure up top by Elida, really pressuring Shawnee High, forcing them to go over the top and almost forcing another turnover. To Toby Freiberger will trigger the inbound. Gonna have to go long. Noonan able to gather that one in. Just underway here. He lined out to the early 2-0 lead. Shawnee looking to get on the scoreboard. McBride works around the screen, gets rid of it. Freiberger comes around with the right hand, finds Noonan on the pick and roll. Noonan gets cut off, has to kick it back out. McBride to Freiberger. Freiberger lines up a three-point try, and it's good. Toby's a great shooter from outside. You can't leave him spaced right there. It looked like Elida kind of wanted him to shoot, but he took the opportunity and drained it. Elida trying to play up tempo that time and get down the floor quickly. Shawnee did a nice job getting back on defense. So now Elida will set up in their half-court offense. The trap coming along that baseline. Toby Freiberger reaches in there. Takes that one away, but it goes out of bounds and will stay with the Bulldogs. It's a good trap right there. Elida's going to have to keep the ball away from the corner, or if they throw it there, move it out of it very quickly. That's Corn has to get rid of it quickly. Throws it all the way back to Zori Island in the backcourt. As you mentioned, Zori Island leads the team in scoring just over 10 points a game. Island can do a lot with the basketball, too. He can get in the paint. He can finish. He can shoot from outside. He's a really, really good ball handler. Here's Angle in a little bit of trouble. Double team coming from Shawnee. Freiberger smacks it away one more time. We're going to have a tie up on the floor. They are going to call jump ball, and the possession arrow favors Elida. Yeah, right now, Coach Taylor not happy. His team not moving the ball quickly enough, and we've seen it twice already, but Shawnee, a team that if you stop in a spot, you're going to have two defenders surrounding you, and they're going to tie it up, and you can see right there the jump ball. So here's Angle back out into the corner. Zun Noonan playing great defense. Torrey Thomas underneath. Almost uses the rim as another defender that time. Gave himself a little bit of room. Abel gets it in for two. Tough finish there from Thomas as well. He was kind of stuck underneath the basket, but has so much upper body strength that he's able to push back and get in good position to score. Here's McBride now. Gets it over to Freiberger. Freiberger looking for someone to go with the basketball. Ends up in the hands of Gavis. Gavis back up top as Shawnee. Looks like they want to try to go to the interior, but not much happening there. Finally, McBride finds a little bit of room to get to the rim. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Nice take to the rack right there to draw the foul from McBride. Zori Island is not quick enough laterally to stay in front of him. As you see on the Charles, Charles River instant replay that time, McBride getting to the rim and picking up the foul. His first free throw is no good. 
Dylan McBride. 75 for 88 from the free throw line so far this season. He gets ready to send his second shot. A couple more seniors checking in for Shawnee. Boston Barker in and Austin Miller as well. Like you said, senior night, so an untraditional starting lineup for the Indians. And CJ Schnipke now checking in, six foot ten senior. He's going to play at the top of that one three or one two one or one two two zone. We're all tied at four here, under six left to go in the first quarter. Island brings it up for Elida and gets it over to Escorn. Escorn guarded by Barker. Barker forces him the opposite direction. And as Elida looks to reverse the basketball, they find Torrey on the inside. Thomas has four white shirts around him, has to kick it out. Cobalt for three. That rattles in and out, but Torrey comes up with the rebound. Thomas creates his own room, can't get it to go down. Fight for the rebound, and it is going to end up into the hands of Elida as Edscorn gets it down into the corner. Got to love the hustle out of both teams here in the early going. Absolutely. Many guys on the floor right there trying to get that basketball. We talked about it. It's rivalry night. They're going to be all over each other trying to get that ball, trying to get this victory. So Elida now with a fourth opportunity here on this offensive possession to try to come away with some points. Island trying to get the offense going as he barks out some orders, gets it to X, scoring in the corner. He's off on the three-pointer. Wilson comes up with the rebound. Going to have another whistle as this one is going to be on number 13. Jackson Cobalt has picked up his second foul already as this one is going to go under, uh, out of bounds underneath basket for Shawnee. Saw Edscorn take that corner three on the last possession for Elida. Obviously not the result he wanted, not getting anything, but that's a guy that we've seen multiple times this year get hot and hit many from outside in a row. So you don't want to leave him open too often. Austin Miller trying to go to work down low, loses the basketball. See Amari Walsh has come into the game for Elida. Freiberger with the left hand, tries to get to the rim, has this one knocked away, and it's going to be a foul. That is going to go on Walsh, who had checked into the game. Good early effort from Shawnee getting to the rack and getting, or drawing fouls, excuse me. They've definitely placed an emphasis on beating Elida from the perimeter. See Coach Tabler over there trying to talk to the official, saying that was on the floor as you check out the instant replay. And it does look like Freiberger was going up for a shot. The officials get the call right. So yeah. Toby at the free throw line. Yeah, he had definitely gathered that ball and started to go up. It was really quick, but definitely the right call. Good job by the referees. But if you're Coach Tabler, you got to argue your case, right? I don't think he's ever hesitated to do so. <laughs> Toby Freiberger makes his first free throw, lines up the second shot. It is up, and he leaves this one short. Wash comes up with the rebound for Elida and pushes it up into the front court. Seth Sharp has come into the game for Elida, number one. Sharp gets it on the inside, working against Miller. Had a mismatch that time, and he picked up the feet as Austin Miller and that length of his causing some issues. Yeah, Sharp was just a little bit indecisive right there. Not sure if he wanted to go up, if he wanted to dribble, if he wanted to pass away, and instead he ended up just taking too many steps. 5-4, Shawnee on top. Four minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Freiberger kicks it back out. Barker for three. That one's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Wash. Wash kicks it over to Edscorn. And now Wash going to try to drive. Gets cut off, has to kick it back out. So Zori Island gets the basketball. Going to hold it as he gets some directions from the bench. Elida's going to have to hit some shots from outside. Shawnee really sitting deep in that zone allowing some space on the perimeter. If you want to get them out of that zone and open up some space in the paint, you're going to have to hit from outside. Three-point try on its way, no good. But tracked down by Torrey Thomas. But what a play by Barker to par poke that one away. Almost comes up with the turnover, but it's going to stay with Elida. So Zori Island's going to take the basketball out underneath his own basket. So you see a couple of three different substitutions quickly going to score a table. And we're going to have an offensive foul. This one's going to go against Island. Island's first, and now Shawnee sending in Dominic Lynch and Beckett Burke And so basically, it's their normal starting lineup out there now. Will McBride checking in as well. So that's the normal Shawnee starting five. 
Ryberger brings it up quickly. Going to try to get all the way to the basket. Ha trying to find Beckett Berkey down in the corner. You mentioned Berkey, just a freshman, has been playing since night one this season, has really grown up a lot. He's a good player. You know, he is a freshman, so you're going to get kind of those freshman mistakes out of him from time to time, but has really grown into that role, and he's going to be a good player for Shawnee for a long time. Nice Whoa. finish from McBride right there on the inbound. Just got in behind the defense, absorbed a little contact from behind as well. Line it comes quickly. Zori Island with the left hand. He's going to get the and one opportunity. That's the stuff that sophomore can do. Island gets to his left, gets a defender right on his side. And not a hard foul, but definitely a foul. When you're a defender, you can't move your feet. You'll see here on the replay, Berkey just kind of slid that left foot a little bit, got tacked with the foul. So Beckett Berkey, his first. It is Shawnee's first as Zori Island connects on the free throw to tie this one at seven. See Berkey handling the basketball for the Indians as well. Remember, six foot three freshman. Austin Miller gets all the way to the rim and gets it off the glass. The line is just too soft right now, and I think Coach Tabler would agree with me. Shawnee just doing whatever they want, going from the perimeter inside. Torrey Island tries to get to the rim one more time. That one's a little bit long. Miller quickly back in transition. McBride. We're going to have the offensive foul, as you saw McBride on that extension. That left hand trying to create his own space, and he's going to pick up his first. Yeah, that's the right call right there. You saw McBride, you mentioned it, the extension. That, that was the problem. It wasn't necessarily lowering his shoulder or initiating contact, but once that contact was made and he threw out the elbow, that's when he gets called for the offensive foul. See, number three, Camden Howard has come into the game for Elida. He gets the basketball and finds Sharp down low. He kicks it back out to Wash. Wash pulls up for two, and it's good. Amari Wash has his first two points of the night, and we're tied one more time, this time at nine. I like that from Wash. Nice, calm pump fake to get past the defender, and good footwork as he pulls up nice and calm. Splashes it home. He's just a freshman, so you got Island as a sophomore, Wash as a freshman. That's two really good guards that they'll have for a long time at Elida. Miller tries to go with the right hand, step back, three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good as Howard goes up and gets the rebound. Miller almost read that pass, took it away. Wash able to spin out of trouble. Here goes Sharp's three-point try from the corner, no good. Ends up in the hands of McBride. McBride had Miller up ahead, but just had it poked away. But Berkey's going to go with the head of steam. And we're going to have the blocking foul as Beckett Berkey is going to make a trip to the free throw line. Again, Shawnee being very aggressive, getting to the rim right there. Berkey seeing the defender had his hips kind of turned, and so it wasn't going to be a charge position. He took the contact, and he gets to the free throw line. Beckett Berkey, 11.6 points per game. Berkey's first free throw is good. It's his first point of the night. That foul was on Bryce Engel. It was his first. It is Elida's fifth team foul already. So they're going to have to be careful as we move towards the end of the first here and into the second quarter. So Beckett Berkey able to make one of two from his trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line tonight. Minute 41 left to go. Shawnee with the one-point lead. Zori Island brings it up for the Bulldogs. Elida has seemed to be at their best when they've been able to go at pace here in the first quarter. This half-court offense, when they've had to slow it down, has been a little bit of an issue. Nice turnaround hook for Angle. That one's no good, though. Miller comes up with the rebound. Good job by Elida finding the soft spot in the zone, though. They turned. It was a good look, but I also noticed a, a guy crashing to the basket that was open. Ryberger tries another three-pointer. No good. Will McBride with the offensive rebound. Nice strong move to get up, but can't get that one to go down. Island, here he comes quickly with the left-hand floater. That one's no good. We're going to have another whistle. And this is going to be foul number two on Beckett Berkey. Yeah, that one was tough to see from this angle, but it looked like Berkey maybe just a little bit too far underneath the basket to draw the charge. We're going to get a good look at it on the Charles River replay here. You see, Island does a nice job of looking Austin Miller off. And I think Berkey, maybe just because he was turned a little sideways yep. that time, didn't have his feet set, and that's why he picked up that foul. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. If the defender isn't facing the offensive player when he absorbs that contact, oftentimes they'll say it's not a legal guarding position, and he'll get tacked with that blocking foul. So good job by the referees once again. Really almost the exact same thing we saw at the other end. 
So Beckett Berkey is going to take a seat as we see Brady Gabus come back into the game. Island was able to connect on his first free throw to tie it at 10. As Elida looks to take the lead one more time. As they are not able to get that one to go, Dominic Lynch goes up to get that rebound. Miller working off the screen. Spins back into the lane, kicks it back out. Gabus for three. That one's going to be no good. Island able to track down the rebound. Island, a little bit of hesitation at the free throw line, has this one blocked, but gets it back. Lida now going to pull it back, and they're going to reset. Ed's going back over to Walsh as everybody is going to get back into space. It's a good block right there. I like the Island attacked, but the next step for him in terms of his development is going to be able to, or is going to be being able to find players on the perimeter. Right there, he attacked two defenders. They collapsed, but he had Wash wide open in the corner for a, a look at an open three, but instead he went up and got that shot blocked. It's still a good take, and that's exactly what you want from your point guard, but you definitely want him to be able to find guys on the perimeter. Lida, four seconds left to go. Wash can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Gets that one to go. Last shot's going to be no good for Shawnee. And with the final second shot by Amari Wash, Elida takes the lead after one. They're on top 12-10. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsors, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Second quarter just about underway here at Lapham Gymnasium. Elida on top, 12 to 10. Fast-paced action there in the first quarter. Both offenses had moments to shine. It was a little bit of an up-and-down game as Shawnee was bringing uh, players in for senior night. But Elida did a nice job there at the end to get back into this one and take the lead. Yeah, we've seen Shawnee attack really nicely, and Elida doing a nice job getting to the rim as well. Torrey Thomas with the hustle play to take that one away. Good hesitation move as he works around uh, Lynch, and he's able to get that one in for two. Yeah, it's great hustle from Torrey Thomas. Averages 4.8 points a game. But the biggest thing for him is he shoots 50% from the field. He gets a lot of good looks underneath. He knows how to use his feet underneath the basket to create space and get easy looks. So now Shawnee works offensively, trying to get something going here. McBride works back around up top. Freiberger. And now it's Lynch down in the corner, guarded by Thomas. As this Elida defense is doing a nice job here, about halfway through that first quarter on, they've really tightened things up. There hasn't been a lot of room for the Indians. Shawnee's really tried to attack early on. We'll see if they can get a screen and find a seam and get to the rack. There's one. Austin Miller, he gets through the lane, going to pick up the foul. That is going to go on at number 31. David Etzcorn, that's his first, team sixth. Austin Miller is going to get two free throws out of it. Austin Miller lines up his first free throw. It is up, and it is no good. So Austin Miller is going to have another shot here from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Let's take a look at the Charles River instant replay. There's a nice job finding a little bit of space. Austin Miller trying to create as the offense has gotten a little stagnant at times and they've had to go to these long offensive possessions. Yeah, and Shawnee won't mind that. Oh, I thought I was going to stay with the Indians. Looked like Thomas came in from behind and knocked it away. But either way, a lot of basketball. Austin Miller came up empty on his trip to the free throw line. Now he lied as Etzcorn works against the end line, going to lose it. And it's going to go back to the Indians. Yeah, he kind of ran out of space over there on the sideline. Didn't have anywhere to go with it unless he was going to pass to Coach Tabler. Well, that's why I think Coach Tabler might have been the extra defender that time as McBride was riding Escorn pretty close. They just ran out of real estate for Escorn. So now the Indians looking for their first points here of the quarter. McBride looking for Miller down low. He works against Sharp. Loses the basketball, gets it back in as he went into a lot of contact that time, able to get that one up as he goes back to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, he's trying to work hard down there. I really like what I've seen from Sharp, not letting him get a good spot and deep on the block. You'll see the replay right here. And 
I think Sharp just reached in with that right hand and a little too much in the upper body, I guess. But either way, that's that's good defense. That's tough defense. He's going to have to continue to do that because as soon as you let Austin Miller start pushing you around down low, it's game over. So Miller's first free throw is good. Second one on its way. And this time he has a perfect trip to the Lee Samus Recipe Chicken free throw line. 14-12, Elida still on top as Wilson now guards Island. See number 11, Tanner Roberts is coming to the game for the first time tonight. And we're going to have another foul. We'll see who this one goes on. They're going to get Miller for tying up Thomas underneath. And that's going to be Austin's first. It is the te team's fifth foul. Nick Pashone comes into the game for Shawnee. And you see Camden Howard has come back in for Elida. Island works through the screen, tries for the slip pass. Wilson does a nice job knocking that one away. Gabris pushes it up dead to McBride. McBride goes into contact, can't get that one to go. Howard comes up with the rebound. Another loose ball that Sharp ends up with. Elida has numbers, does a nice job finding the escort underneath for the easy two. Yeah, that's going really nice. Transition right there. He came back on defense, knocked the ball away, and then got down for the layup. And now he'll get attacked with a foul. And on the opposite end, it's actually going to go on Torrey Thomas. So Thomas picks up his first, but that's going to be enough for the one and one now. 5.50 left to go here in the half. And from here on out, any foul by uh, Eli is going to send Shawnee to the free throw line. Davis able to connect on the first of the one and one. He still has one shot left to go as he makes his first trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line tonight. I think these eight fouls really a product of Shawnee's aggressiveness getting to the basket and not being afraid of contact. A lot of times you see guys try to avoid contact. Shawnee going right into it, which has resulted in a couple charges, but eight fouls against Elida and a lot of free throws coming up for Shawnee if they continue that pace. Shawnee's last six points have all come from the line as Howard lets the shot go, and he connects on a three-pointer. And that's exactly what I'm talking about for Zori Island. That was a fantastic job getting to the rim, getting the defense to collapse, and then finding his man on the outside for that three-pointer. That's the next level that once he can start doing that consistently, I, I love watching that from him. He's going to be really, really tough moving forward. He's already tough right now. Shown has this one knocked out of his hands, but it will stay with the Indians as we have some more substitutions. Amari Wash coming into the game. Bryce Angle coming back into the game as well for Elida. 5-14 left to go here in the first half as the Bulldogs are on top, 19-14. To Shawnee with the basketball underneath their own basket. Freiberger looking for someone to go with it. That three-point try is going to be a little short. Wilson does a great job of getting that rebound. It's going to get blocked from behind by Island. And that one's just going to be out of bounds, no foul. It's a nice job by Island getting up high. You can see the athleticism from him. Doesn't stand very tall, but he can get up and alter and block some shots. That's big time. Wilson works into the lane. He's going to be fouled. And this one is going to go on Seth Sharp. Seth Sharp picks up his second foul. That is the eighth team foul for Elida. So Keegan Wilson's going to make his first trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line tonight. Wilson so far scoreless, but trying to change that here with this first free throw. Wilson, another one of those seniors. Wilson unable to connect. Offensive rebound comes down to Gabus, and he's able to get it off the glass. It's a great job from Gabus, not only grabbing that rebound, but showing the patience to let two defenders go up and by him before stepping through and getting the easy look at the basket. Island with the extra pass over to Edscorn. Edscorn back up to Island as Taylor shouts out directions from the bench. Quick handoff, wash, pull up, jumper. No good. Offensive rebound comes down to Howard. Elida now with another opportunity. Elida has done an excellent job tonight on the offensive boards. They've given themselves extra opportunities on over half of their possessions at least. Yeah, they're crashing hard, doing a nice job finding some space, getting around the Indians. That's going around midcourt. 
Looks for the screen, gets it. Davis pokes it away, but he's going to get whistled for the foul. As the Shawnee bench, very unhappy with that call. As you saw Coach Triplett, he just had to take a walk. Because he, 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 I think even Coach Triplett that time thought, you know what, this might not end well. I'm going to need to turn walk away. Yeah, and I've seen multiple times where Coach uh, Nick Burke, the, the assistant for Shawnee, has had to get up and maybe calm Coach Triplett down. He's a passionate guy, loves basketball, loves his team, always sticking up for him. So from our angle, it's a little hard to see. It did look like Gabus reached in there pretty clean, but must have been some contact. The official was right there. That's Gordon. He's going to move through the double team. Looked like he slid his foot that time, but able to keep it, but can't get it to go down. Yeah, the, the non-pivot foot slid, but he did a nice job keeping that pivot foot down. Island with the, with the foul, gets it over to Angle. Angle gets it up through contact as Toby Freiberger will pick up the foul. Great finish. I really like what Thomas did, or Island did right there. You'll see here, he attacks the defender. That way, it opens things up, and Freiberger just comes over and knocks Angle, sorry, on the head. Dominic Lynch coming into the game for Keegan Wilson. As Bryce Angle goes to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line for the and one opportunity, and he's able to convert. 22 16, 340 left to go here in the half. Shawnee has gone a long time since they've made a basket from the field. Trying to change that right here. That shot's going to be off. McBride can't get the offensive rebound. Freiberger able to knock that one away, gets it back to McBride along the baseline. That one goes up off the side of the rim. McBride fights through it. Lynch, he's going to let the three-pointer go, and that one's good. Dominic Lynch with a big three-point shot for the Indians. Shawnee's going to take the timeout, and we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldog, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Shawnee takes the timeout after the big three-pointer by Dominic Lynch it goes down, and that gets Shawnee back within three. It's been a while since they had made a basket from the field. A lot of their points prior to that, the last six to be in fact, had all come from the free throw line. Doing a nice job defensively too, making it tough for Elida to move the ball around. Walsh drops it off to Angle. He has the high floater. That one goes down. It's a nice find from Walsh right there. Again, him and Island are going to be really, really tough in the WBL for years to come if they're able to penetrate like that and pass. Here's McBride, works against Walsh, kicks it back out. So he gets it off to Freiberger. Here's Vachon. Gets through the double team, has to throw it away. Cobalt comes up with it. Freiberger can't swipe it away, but must have had enough contact as Toby Freiberger looks like he's going to pick up another foul. They do call that on Freiberger. Tried to swipe for it there on the fast break to slow things down. It's going to be one and one. Jackson Cobalt, he'll make a trip to the Lee Samus recipe chicken free throw line as we take a look at the replay. Freiberger does reach around there. Must have gotten some contact on the hand. That's what the official saw as Cobalt lines up his first free throw. Shot is up, and it is no good. Austin Miller with the rebound. Yeah, Shawnee's been missing Miller. Two fouls had to sit for a lot of that first quarter. Miller has this one taken away. Wash. Works up into the front court. He's going to keep it himself. Gets it off the glass. Mm. Rattles down and in. What a great take by Amari Walsh. Showed a lot of strength right there going through contact. And we're going to have a foul on the other end. Dominic Lynch gets fouled. He'll make a trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And this one is going to go on Amari Walsh. It'll be his second. This is the 10th team foul for Elida. So Lynch will get two shots. See Lynch. Able to gather that one in, goes right into Walsh. Walsh's feet not quite set as he picks up the foul. Lynch can't connect on the first shot. Wilson in for Freiberger now. Freiberger with those two fouls. So the junior, Dom Lynch, has one more shot coming. Everybody's set. 
gets ready for a second. Shot is up, and it is good. Dominic Lynch now with four points on the night. Elida with the six-point lead. That's scoring. Works around McBride. Shawnee works through this 1-2-2 defense here. Torrey Thomas, high shot. Elida, these Bulldogs, he's not the only one. They got a couple of players. They do a nice job of getting that high arc on the basket. But the shots look pretty, and they're falling. Seen a lot of shots from mid-range drop for Elida. They're doing a really great job, like you said. What an answer by Will McBride as he gets the three-pointer to go down. Yeah, Shawnee needed that one for sure. Elida looking really nice. That score, and he lines up the three-pointer. That one's good. Back and forth they go as Elida stretches the lead to 31 and 23. And we have a timeout on the floor. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. We'll step aside as well, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So timeout on the floor as Edscorn comes up with a big three-point answer as McBride had scored a three-point try of his own on the last trip down the floor. Here goes another one up. Austin Miller with the answer. Right now, both teams hot from behind the arc. Well, it's fun to watch out there. Both teams doing a nice job penetrating, getting the defense to collapse, finding guys open on the outside. I don't know if we've seen one of those threes hit the rim either. Shawnee has come up with a couple of big shots here their last few possessions. Got to get a defensive stance here as the half comes to an end. Island guarded by Wilson. Wilson trying to poke it away. Island almost loses the basketball, kept his dribble, gets it taken away. Here's Miller. He's going to take it all the way in for the big jam. Austin Miller with the emphatic slam to make this a three-point game. Thomas going to work underneath, works against Berkey. Berkey has to be careful with the fouls, can't challenge too hard. But as Miller went to save it, stepped out of bounds, and will stay with the Bulldogs. Love that from Miller. Does a really nice job playing that passing lane. Notice Thomas was in trouble, or Island was in trouble rather, and he stepped up. He knew the only place where he could pass it was on this right side, knocked it away, and of course, with that athleticism, able to finish strong. Check out the elevation by Austin Miller, the emphatic dunk. Now it's gonna be whether or not the defense can come up with a stand here with under 30 left to go in the half. That's Gorn, guarded by Lynch. He's going to go with the left hand, gets into the lane, drops it off, angle off the glass for two. And that's going to be an out-of-bounds violation as Lynch looks like he was leaning, maybe didn't have both feet down on the floor when he put that one in bounds. So it's going to go back to the Bulldogs. You see Coach Triplett trying to plead his case, but I think it's going to fall on deaf ears. You know, it was kind of a strange one right there. It happened so quickly, I'm not entirely sure what happened. Either way, Elida now with a big chance to extend the lead before the half. Shawnee had the momentum. Elida with a chance here to take it back, going into the locker room. Island gets it out to Angle. Angle for three. That one falls down right at the buzzer. A huge three-pointer for the Bulldogs as they are going to go to the locker room with all the momentum and the lead, 36-28. We will step aside and be back with the second half here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Second half just about underway here at Lapid Gymnasium at Shawnee High School as the Elida Bulldogs have the lead 36-28. Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter and Evan Back and forth, first half action. It looked like Shawnee had all the momentum, gotten themselves within striking distance, but Elida with a flurry and that big three-pointer by Angle to end the first half that really capped a, a very good half for the Bulldogs. Yeah, absolutely. Elida in the second quarter really started to do a nice job getting past the top line of defense for Shawnee, getting the ball into the paint. 
and then kicking it out for some open looks or finishing or being fouled. So I really like what Elite is doing. If Shawnee wants to keep them from scoring and get back into this game, they're going to have to stop them from penetrating, which you saw right there is a tough task. And what a take by Zori Island as he went right into the contact and got that one up as the lead now is expanded to 10, 38-28. Going to have a foul on the other end as you check out the Charles River instant replay. Will McBride quickly coming down the floor. He's going to be fouled. He's going to make a trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. First That's shot is up, and it is good. That's the third foul against Jackson Cobalt, who's going to have to take a seat, but he's replaced by Amari Wash, the freshman, who's done a really nice job along with Island getting into this defense. And Wash has a really nice mid-range pull-up as well. I've liked what he's been able to do so far tonight. McBride's second shot is up. This one is good as well. Back to an eight-point lead. Island brings it up for Elida. Here's Wash, who just checked into the game, as Evan had mentioned. Shawnee also coming out of their traditional zone and playing man-to-man -to, -man to start this half. Angle going right at Berkey and his fouls. Good challenge by Beckett Berkey, but Elida with the hustle keeps it. Torrey Thomas gets it in for two. Yeah, it felt like Shawnee just kind of fell asleep underneath. Thomas grabbed that ball, and, and Miller just kind of stared at him. So an easy two for Elida to extend it to 10. McBride, he lets the three-pointer go, and he hits it from straight on. Great play right there coming off the double screen. Just coming up, nice catch and shoot, quick fire. Drained it, big three. Gonna have a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So a quick timeout by Shawnee as Elida brings the basketball up. Their lead down to seven. Lynch comes out, put a little bit of pressure on Island. Takes a look up at the clock, goes with the right hand. Lynch loses it, but a great play by McBride to reach in there and take that one away from Zori. Miller going to go baseline. Austin has to throw it back out. Berkey for three, and it's good. Nice take by Miller, goes baseline, gets the defense to stare at him, and Berkey shifted just enough to find an opening. That scoring, he's going to let a three-pointer go. That one's no good. Freiberger comes up with the rebound. Shawnee's offense is feeling it. So is McBride. Will McBride with two three-pointers here in the corner. Makes this a one-point game as Elida wants to take the timeout. Shawnee has pulled within one. Elida's still on top, 40 to 39. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Elida wanted to take the time out as Shawnee's offense is on fire here to start this third quarter as they have pulled back within a one at 40 to 39. A quick ovation right now for Jordan Banks and the family. A bunch of money raised at Shawnee tonight. Like we said in the pregame, this community, this county, this league, all stepping up to support Jordan Banks in his battle with cancer. Here's Amari Walsh down in the corner, works back around towards the free throw line, has to pull it back out. As you can tell, that Shawnee defense right now just looks a little bit more, like they had a little bit more pep in their step, and they can feel that all this momentum right now is on their side. Island trying to take it back, and he connects. Zori Island with a dagger three-pointer. That time it was Torrey Thomas crashing inside, getting that defense to collapse, and a nice look from Island outside, 33% three-point shooter. Austin Miller tries a three-pointer, and right now the Shawnee Indians can't miss from behind the arc. Four of their last four. It's a great move right there by Island, but Right now, Elida just not putting enough pressure on Shawnee outside. They're just giving too much space. It's not like Shawnee's doing a ton to get open. You see right here the job from Island to get inside and get his man up in the air to absorb contact. 
and he'll shoot those Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. But on the other end, Elida's got to put some pressure on the perimeter, make Shawnee move the ball a little bit. Yeah, that time there was just too much space for Austin Miller. No challenge whatsoever. Makes Elida pay, but Zori Island does a good, nice job. Gets that contact on the other side as Dominic Lynch picked up his first foul and it is Shawnee's first here in the half. Island connects on both free throws. As this is back out to a three-point lead, 45-42. Elida on top. McBride works against Wash. Works through the screen, gets rid of it. Here's Berkey. Does a nice job of pulling up. And then the floater as Island, I think, thought that pass was going to go. So he vacated that space. Berkey does a nice job taking advantage and gets the two. Island guarded tightly, found enough space. Couldn't get it in. Thomas there for the offensive rebound. That doesn't go. And then he's going to get whistled for the foul as Austin Miller was going to have a clean run at it if he didn't get grabbed. Two fouls against Thomas. Probably a good foul there to make sure Shawnee couldn't get out in transition. Now Shawnee a chance to take the lead. 45-44. Shawnee has fought their way back. They had been down by double digits several different times today. Gone on a nice run here to open the third quarter. Elida, though, putting the defensive pressure on. Fight for the loose ball. And how about that hustle by senior Will McBride playing his final game here at Lapham Gymnasium as he hit the floor hard going after that one. Three Indians on the, or three players, excuse me, on the ground right there fighting for that basketball one point game. You love the atmosphere, you love the rivalry, you love the hustle from both squads. Freiberger pulls it back out, waits for the screen to come. So McBride tried to say something to Freiberger there as they're trying to get the offense set. Miller, he's going to spin, gets it to Lynch. Lynch can't find anywhere to go with it and has to hand it back to Miller. Miller's going to try to create, kicks it to Berkey for three. And back at Berkey with the three-pointer. The three-point barrage continues for the Shawnee Indians. We need to call the fire department. It's on fire in here. Shawnee, five of their last five, my goodness. They are lighting it up. Good job that time moving the ball around, getting inside, kicking it out, and Berkey, no doubt, finding the bottom of the net. Five three-pointers in the corner. Has Shoney on top, too. And we're going to have a blocking foul as this is going to go on Beckett Berkey, and he is fired up. The freshman not liking that call. Thought he had good position, and that is going to be the third foul on Beckett Berkey as he's going to have to take a seat. We get the benefit of replay right here, Charles River. Thanks for sponsoring. And oh, man, he did look like his feet were set. Referees both kind of looking at each other, not sure what to call. And it's a tough one there for Berkey, who has to take a seat with three fouls. Wash now works into the lane, goes up against Lynch. Lynch does a nice job of getting his arms up high, just enough to cause a little bit of hesitation by Wash, and that caused the miss. Here's McBride dribbling through traffic. Seth Sharp reaches in there. He's going to get called for the foul. Sharp now with three fouls of his own. It's a third team foul for Elida. As you see, Zori Island check out. Camden Howard comes back in for the Bulldogs. McBride going to let the three-pointer go one more time. That one's no good. So the Indians are human. Good to know. I think the gym would have exploded if that one would have gone down. We saw the student section rising behind him. Ed Scorn can't connect on his. Rebound comes down to Shawnee. Freiberger brings it up. Works against Sharp. Kicks it out to Miller. Miller with the hesitation. He's going to get into the lane. Great job creating as Seth Sharp is going to pick up his fourth foul. And Austin Miller will take a trip to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line for the and one opportunity. Miller just hanging in the air right now. Or right there, excuse me, 14 points at the moment, as you see here, the replay, it looked like he was in the air for hours as he floated right through contact and laid it in easy. I wish I could jump that high. I'll tell you what, it, basketball would have been so much easier for me had I been able to jump. It's weird. If you have the skill set, basketball is not that hard of a sport to play. <laughs> yeah, well. Austin Miller connects on the and one. It is a five-point Indian lead is there on top, 50 to 45, with 2.30 left to go here in the quarter. Yeah. 
Island goes around with the left hand, gets cut off. Has to go somewhere with it. Ends up into the hands of Cobalt, who's checked back in with his three fouls. Cobalt with the right hand. That one's no good. Austin Miller goes up high for the rebound. He's going to push the ball up ahead. Gavis had a little bit of room that time, had to gather it back in, but does a great job on the hesitation to get that one to go down. Six points for Gavis. Nice job through contact. And we're going to have another foul, it looks like. Now Wash moved his or, or drug his pivot foot. Got called for the travel right there. So another turnover by the Bulldogs as Shawnee has just grabbed a hold of this momentum and they've ridden it to a seven point lead with a chance to extend it here. Ryberg drops it off to Wilson who's come back into the game for Shawnee. Here's Miller, he's gonna let the three pointer go. One more time, Austin Miller is feeling it. Miller with a nice high release right there. Wash lost the handle, Shawnee took it away. Pushed up ahead to McBride. McBride, see if he pulls it back out. He gets fouled. Looks like Bryce Engel on the push that time. It'll be his second foul. 15th foul for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Engel right there. Put two hands on the back. I don't think he shoved too hard. We're going to get a look at it right here. And yeah, he just kind of ran into him. It's still a foul, but I don't think it was necessarily a shove or a flagrant or anything like that. I think it was more almost trying to brace himself with that left hand as he tried to reach around and poke it away with the right. The officials, though, saw the tumble by McBride and the extension by Engel, He's, so he picks up the foul. So the floor's all dry now as Freiberger's going to take it out of bounds. Ten-point Shawnee lead. Shown. Three. Uh, Good. The Shawnee Golden State Warriors lighting it up from outside right now. Good Island. job by... Island right there. Yeah, trying to will his team to stay in this one as that's all really Elida can do at this point. You know, it's not bad defense by the Bulldogs and a lot of those shots, they're there. They're, you know, a couple of those ones. That last one by Austin Miller, he had two defenders right on him, but he just rose up in very little space as Shawnee right now, the basket is just looking like a hula hoop to all of them. Yeah, absolutely. We've got so many guys firing their seven of their last eight from beyond the arc. Unbelievable numbers for the Indians here in the third quarter as they've opened up a double-digit lead. Trailed for most of this game until recently. Zori Island able to connect on his first free throw. And he goes one for two for the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Pashone almost hit his head on the rim on that rebound, by the way. He got Fireberger up there. lobs it to Miller. Miller, Euro step, no look pass down to the corner. Wilson gets it back out. Extra pass, Freiberger for three. That one's no good. Going to hit the guide wire above the backboard. So it'll go back to the Bulldogs. And I have no idea how that shot was not blocked. As Freiberger, he, his defender was already in the air when he pulled up for that three-point shot. He got it up in the air pretty high as well. So I think he just was able to get it over the hand of that defender. Under a minute left to go here in the third. Cobalt looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Gets it over to Eskorn. Eskorn into the lane, lets that one go. No good. Gabis going to push it up. Going to go all the way to the rim himself. Spins around, goes through some contact. Can't get it to go. Fight for the loose ball. And a great heads-up play by Brady Gabis. He knew he wasn't going to be able to stop himself from going out of bounds. Throws it back off the Elida player to help keep the possession to the Indians. Love the effort right there from Gabis. Able to get through some contact to get the shot up. Obviously, it didn't fall, but a fantastic job keeping the ball in bounds. Pashon going to take this one out of bounds for the Indians. Indians with 30 seconds left to go. We'll see. Doesn't look like they're going to try to hold for the last shot. They're just going to keep going. That one hangs on the rim and falls down for Freiberger. Willed that ball into the basket. It looked like it was going to come off the rim the wrong way, but somehow able to put just enough behind it to roll it up and over. So now we light up. Going to hold for the last shot. Seven seconds left to go. Island moves around to the left. Miller on the switch. A little hesitation. Floater. That one's no good. And the Indians turn an eight-point deficit to begin this quarter into a 14-point lead on the back of huge three-point shots 
and they have the lead heading to the fourth quarter. They're on top, 60 to 46. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Atlanta Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Take a look at the Elida Bulldogs and Coach Tabler. Is, I think he's probably just trying to get the shell shock out of his team right now as they just were completely taken by surprise as Shawnee could not miss from behind the arc. Seven made three-pointers in the quarter, and it just seemed like everything they put up was going to be an easy basket. Yeah, so I don't anticipate Shawnee going seven of nine from outside in the fourth quarter, but I wouldn't put anything past him at this point either. So Coach Tabler is going to have to tell his guys, look, you have eight more minutes that you need to defend. You need to stay right in the hip of your assignment. Do not let them get any space because right now it seems like all they can do is make threes. So we are just about underway. Official gives the whistle or blows the whistle. Shawnee begins with the basketball. Berkey gets it over to Gavis. As he finds Berkey back into the lane, Berkey not able to connect, but it's going to stay with the Indians. Yeah, Berkey right there, nice catch, nice turn, but just a little bit too short on the shot. Going to have some substitutions coming in for the Indians. Shown coming in for Gabus. McBride gets the ball inbounds. Down in the corner, baseline goes McBride. He gets it off the glass. That's no good. As Berkey hit the ground, but able to get it back to his teammate. But this one gets thrown away. Island gets it up front, works against Miller. Great job on the hesitation, but great defense by the Indians. Miller. We're going to have a technical. We'll see who this one goes on, and it looks like it's going to go on Coach Tabler. Yeah, Coach Tabler not happy. He thought Island was fouled underneath. And even if he was, they missed the call. But I really like what Miller did right there. Miller slowed down, timed it up, and instead of going up and trying for a heavy block, he kind of stopped. And he knew Island was going to fake. And instead of going up in the air, he just waited until Island went up. And Coach Tabler has just been tossed out of this game. So Coach Tabler not happy with the officiating letting them know about it, and he just picked up his second technical, so he is going to have to leave the gym as the officials are going to wait for him to head back to the locker room. So it looks like Will McBride's going to be shooting the technical free throws for the Indians. He steps up to the free throw line. McBride, first shot, no good. And look, we talked about it in rivalry games. It can get pretty intense. Coach Tabler, hey, he's a passionate guy. It's He's a guy that you and I know personally. We spent a lot of time with him. You know, He's a great dude, right? He loves his team. He wants to fight for his team. Uh, sometimes, hey, if you've ever watched Hoosiers, you know, sometimes coaches try to get thrown out on purpose. I'm not saying that's what he did here, uh, but Sometimes you just get caught up in the moment. So Will McBride, it's a little bit of a struggle here from the free throw line as he hasn't been able to connect on any of the technical free throws. He has a one more remaining. And this one falls. So Will McBride goes one for four on technical free throws from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line as Shoney will get the ball back. They're going to get something sorted over at the scorer's table. You know, and as you mentioned, you know, Coach Tabler, very passionate. There's a lot of contact down there, a lot of emotion around tonight's game. You know, also can be easy to watch your team go from pretty much looking like they were in control to just watching shot after shot after shot goes down. That frustration does come out, especially when you feel like the calls aren't going your way as well. But either way, Shawnee now with a good opportunity to extend this lead as they are on top 15. Berkey with the basketball, guarded by Ingle, gets it over to Miller. Now here's Pachon. Gets to about the free throw line, has to get rid of it. As Shawnee now showing a little bit more patience, letting some of that clock run. Miller drops it off to Berkey, he loses it off his fingertips. Edscorn, he works it up ahead, goes against Freiberger. Freiberger tried to go around for the swipe, missed it. 
as Escorn keeps the basketball. And let's see what they call here. And it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow does favor the Bulldogs, so Elida will keep it as Dominic Lynch is going to come back into the game for Shawnee. Zori Island going to trigger the inbound for Elida. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Going to need to get rid of it. Lobs it high to Seth Sharp. Island works against Lynch. Drops it off to Edscorn. Edscorn's three-point try. Going to be a little bit short, but Seth Sharp comes up with a good rebound. And then we're going to have a foul on the rebound. And that one is going to go on a Dominic Lynch. That will be Dom's second foul of the afternoon. Let's take a look at the Charles River instant replay. As Dominic just tried to go in there and swipe that one away, but got too much contact. So another timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Take a look at the Elida bench right now. Just trying to find some way of stopping this onslaught from the Shawnee Indian offense as Seth Sharp will go to the free throw line to shoot two. 6.39 left to go in the game. Still a lot of time, but Elida's got to find ways to score quickly. Sharp connects on the first. And they're capable of scoring quickly, right? They've got some really quick guards that can get down the floor, that can penetrate into this defense. They've done a nice job getting inside and drawing contact. Shawnee with just four fouls. But I really like Elida's chances if they can run the floor quickly and run through their sets and get to the rim. So Seth Sharp has a perfect trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Here's Dominic Lynch. Lynch created his own space that time, but just couldn't quite get it to fall. Elida's going to push it up ahead. Island down into the corner. That's going for three. High arcing shot, no good. Miller comes up with the rebound. Those are the kind of looks they're going to have to look for going forward. I don't mind that shot. That's great defense, though, from Shawnee closing out, making it tough to hit. Lynch working through the double team. Has to get rid of it. Picked off by Sharp. Sharp moves up ahead against Freiberger. There's going to be a foul as Toby looks like he's going to pick up his third. And it'll be the team's sixth foul, I believe. Yeah, I don't think Toby was trying to foul right there. Just kind of reached in. It was a hard foul, but also probably a good foul. They're still not over the limit, so it just results in an inbounds play. Lob into Ingles, guarded by Berkey. Gets it back over to Island. Island looking for somewhere to go. Goes baseline. Hesitation move. Can't get that one to go, but Angle puts it back down. That one's no good. Berkey passes out of trouble, gets it to Miller. He pushes ahead to Lynch. Extra pass coming. Great job by Austin Miller. Good body control. Gets up, moves around the defender, and finishes for two. Miller now with 20 points, doing a really nice job. Playing great defense, rebounding, and getting down the floor in transition. You see right here, he grabs the rebound, and he hustles out. Austin Miller finishes this one high at the rim with the finger roll. Uh, Elida just kind of looks dejected right now. They're not really challenging at the rim. They're trying to score quickly, but Shawnee getting out and scoring on their own. That's scoring. He's going to drive. He'll pick up the foul. This one is going to go on number five, Toby Freiberger. That'll be his fourth. And if you're Elida and you know that you got to try to find some way of scoring with the st clock stopped, you do have the one and one opportunity now from here on out. That's Gordon leaves this one short. <laughs> 65, 48, 5, 10 left to go here in the game. Keegan Wilson coming into the game. Camden Howard comes in for Elida. So does Jackson Cobalt. I think it's important to remind folks, Shawnee was down by eight in the third quarter. I mean, it's just been an incredible second half for the Indians who caught fire in the third and have done a really nice job playing defense and keeping, or actually extending the lead here in the fourth. So we mentioned, you know, a lot going around this game. You know, the Shawnee player, Jordan Banks, 
We've covered him quite a bit here on WSM. Um, a, a great football player for this uh, for this tribe team. You know, battling a, a serious medical diagnosis. You know, ha has a battle with cancer. He's really brought some <laughs> brought some communities together. But check out that back behind the back. Bounce pass that finishes for two. Right now, Shawnee can do no wrong as we're going to have a, another whistle. But as we mentioned, a lot going on with the community. There's been a lot of businesses that have uh, done fundraisers. They brought things up. The school has done a lot. The area schools have done a lot. And one of the things that has come up is every WBL school and every school in Allen County has joined together to create a shirt for Jordan Banks. As you check out that replay, just what a slick pass by McBride and Berkey with the heads up to be able to catch it and get that in. But they've all got together. They're all going to do this. They're all coming together just as one um, one entity just to try to support Jordan and give it as much as they can. There are going to be um, some shirts. There's a store already up for sale that people can go to, jordanbanks.itemorder.com. Um, all the proceeds will go to help him in his fight against cancer. Jordan Banks, just a wonderful young man who was dealt a tough hand. Uh, but he is strong. He has a lot of support, a lot of love, and a lot of prayers behind him. We'll be thinking about him as well. But just another great thing that is going on in the area so everybody can go to that and help out if they'd like. The Indians, though, right now, I don't even know how you could try to think about stopping them. It seems like everything they're doing is clicking, Evan. If that one was going to go in, I think they'd have it put all together. But right now, Elida is still keeping their hopes alive. Hello. Full vault with the hustle to try to save that one. Going to have a foul as Elida is going to go down to the free throw line. As Keegan Wilson will get whistled for this foul. It's going to be his third. So about the only thing so far not going well for the Indians are the foul situation as they have quite a few guys with three or four fouls. Elida going to the free throw line now to shoot the one and one. Cobalt, just two points so far tonight. He's done a nice job defensively. Like you said, not much Elida's been able to do here in the second half. So Jackson Cobalt connects on his first shot from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Gets ready to line up his second shot is on its way, and it is good. Last six points from Elida have all come from the free throw line. A quick pass by Berkey gets it to McBride as they are trying to get out of this trap set by Elida. And Austin Miller is going to get called for the offensive foul on this one as he tried to drive one more time. But the basketball, the shot will not count, and the basketball is going to go back to Elida. Yeah, tough one there. Nice job by Miller getting to the free or getting to the rim, excuse me. But Elida sets up shop underneath, able to take the charge, save the points, and a chance to cut back into this lead a little more. So here's Camden Howard gets it over to Wash. Wash moves it back up as Engel has it around midcourt. He's going to drive, kicks it over to Howard. 3.38 left to go. Island gets through the defense, kicks it out long for Cole Vaughn. His three-point shot, no good. Here comes another try by Walsh. He decides to put it on the floor. He gets that one high off the glass, no good. Fight for the rebound, goes to no one. So it ends up out of bounds, and it will be back into the hands of the Indians. See Edscorn coming back into the game for Elida. Get a nice shot of Will McBride, the senior, has played one heck of a game tonight. You know, we've lately just been talking about Austin Miller because of some of the things that he's been doing. But honestly, the catalyst for this run has been Will McBride. He had those back-to-back -back threes when Shawnee was still down in the third quarter. And that really seemed to ignite something in the Shawnee offense. And then after that, the lid just came off, and they just couldn't stop scoring. Absolutely. And this is a nice finish right here by Gabus. We've seen him do a really nice job tonight, being patient around the basket, drawing some contact, finishing through contact getting himself a few free throws. He has eight points tonight, now a steal. Another put up by Gabus. That one's going to be no good. Cobalt with the rebound. And we're going to have another foul. It'll be 10 against the Indians, so two free throws coming up for Elida. Brady Gabus is going to get called for the foul. Second, 
Jackson Cobalt makes another trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line, this time to shoot two. First free throw is good. So they have at least been able to score when the clock has been stopped. It does keep them in this only a 16 point game. Yes, it's a big deficit, but it's not something that can be overcome. But Elite is going to have to find ways to continue to score with the clock stop, but they got to get some defensive stops on the other side. Yeah, and I expect Shawnee to try to extend some possessions, move the ball around a little bit. If they can break the pressure, nice jump right there, knocking it away is Seth Sharp. Sharp read that one all the, the whole way as he was almost able to get that one back for Elida, but ends up out of bounds. Stay with Shawnee. Freiberger has to get it over to McBride. Quick pass up to Berkey. Extra pass as it never hit the floor. Great execution by the Indians. Davis there with 10 points on senior night. Sharp leaves that one just short. Miller comes up with the rebound. About all she wrote, I imagine Coach Triplett will start working some of the seniors off the floor so they can get the traditional send-off, standing ovation from the crowd. And this is a senior class that saw a lot of success. Davis goes baseline, has that one knocked away, but they were a part of those impressive state runs, regional final runs that the Indians had uh, several years ago, and they have really helped elevate this Indians program. Zori Island gets his second foul as he's going to go to the bench. Samari Walsh is going to come back in. And Zori Island a little fired up after that play as Gabus goes to the line. Gabus able to connect on the first shot. He'll have a second one from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Referees trying to get things calmed down as Miller got tied up with Camden Howard underneath. Second free throw on its way. This one is good as well. 19 point lead after an eight point deficit in this half. Cobalt for three. That one's going to be no good. Becky Berkey back out, uh -oh. going to go to Miller. Miller able to go up high, and he puts that one down. An impressive slam by Austin Miller. They're going to have a foul as Freiberger gets caught up in the air that time. India's just having fun right now. You can see that one developing from a mile away. You see him drop the ball off, one-handed, able to grab it, move it, throw it down. 24 points for Miller, and here you go. The seniors getting that ovation they're looking for. And looks like we may have a timeout on the floor, and we do. It'll be a full timeout, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. At a timeout on the floor as we had some changes from the Indians as they're trying to get some of the seniors back in. Zach Noonan coming back into the game for Shawnee. As Seth Sharp goes to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. First shot is up and good. Which, excuse me, that was actually an and one. Seth had made the shot as he was fouled. So under two left to go. As Shawnee looks like they're going to go away with a big victory here tonight. As we know tournaments are right around the corner. The last regular season game for both of these teams as they will get their tournament play underway next week. You know, and Evan, what, kind of, what does a win like this do for the confidence of Shawnee going into those tournaments? Well, it's got to do a lot. Shawnee is a team that has a lot of athletes, a lot of really good basketball players. Obviously, 9-12, and 12, not the result this season that they wanted. But when you have this much momentum and you start to get some confidence from outside like they certainly have after lighting it up in the second half today, you have to be excited if you're an Indians fan. Some more changes as Will McBride comes off the floor for Shawnee, getting hugs from the coaching staff and the bench. 
as he went out in style tonight. As does Austin Miller as he's going to check out for the final time. We have some more changes coming. C.J. Snipke into the game. Boston Barker into the game. Sage Ebling coming in for Shawnee. And then for Elida, lots of changes for them as well. See number 11, Tanner Roberts. Number 14, Isaiah Judkins. Number 35, Parker Krim. Number 23, Evan Jackson. And number 20, that is a Gabe Adcock. Elida with the basketball. Three-point try on its way, and it's good. Isaiah Judkins comes in and hits a three-pointer. Judkins, a senior for Elida. Nice basket right there off the bench. Ebling moves it over to Noonan. Noonan, he's going to drive. He wants to get some points on senior night. Gets his own rebound. Tries to get over to Barker. Barker gets the shot up, and it's good. Always nice for a senior on senior night, not just to leave here with the win, but to get some points on the board as well. Newton almost comes up with the steal. Lida kicks that one around. Snipke took a hard shot. He looks like he's going to be OK, though. Right to the noggin, man. Watch out for that coconut. I know 15 seconds. Judkins drops it back off as Elida just looking for one final shot. Three-point try, no good. Noonan secures the rebound, and that is going to do it. Shawnee comes away with a big victory, 70 to 60, as they found themselves down eight to begin the third quarter. Went on a barrage of three-pointers, seven made three-pointers in that third quarter. Turned that deficit into a huge lead and rode that to a victory tonight. Yeah, they never stopped. The Indians did a great job moving the ball in the second half. Kind of started with Elida kind of sagging back and leaving some space. But once you hit a couple, you start to feel that momentum. They really started to pull away. Really impressive game from the Indians tonight. They should be really proud of their effort and should have a lot of momentum heading into the tournament. So we will step aside when we come back. We'll have tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner, and we'll wrap this one up. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. We're being joined by Coach Triplett. And Coach, congratulations on the victory tonight. What does a big win like this do for the confidence going down to the tournament? Yeah, that, that's what we said. You know, going into the tournament, we needed to find some ways to get some momentum, uh, challenge the guys at halftime. You know, this is the last opportunity for our 10 seniors, and we wanted to go out and play well. We had a tremendous third quarter, got the energy in the crowd back going, and I think that that's, that's how we're going to have to beat people come tournament time. We're going to have to do it collectively. I think we had four guys in double figures tonight, guys contributing on the glass. So um, it's, it's going to be a joint effort, and I was proud of how we did that tonight. You mentioned that third quarter, seven three-pointers, push the deficit into a huge lead. What really, you think, what changed, what sparked that? Because for a while there, it kind of seemed like the offense might be a little stagnant. They were having a hard time getting consistent, but about halfway through that third quarter, they really turned it on. Yeah, I think with us, it always starts with defense. You know, we, we give up 36, whatever it was in the first half. Um, against a team that averages about 48. I didn't think we were very good at all. And they came out, first two possessions, they scored. So I think it was 40 to 33 when we called a timeout. And, and we said, guys, you know, we're, we're, we need to find ways to get stops. And once we started to do that, all of a sudden the offensive end, we're getting down in transition a little bit easier. Obviously, everything looks good when the ball goes through the net and you're shooting well like that. But I, I think it started with defense, giving them one opportunity, um, and then getting out in transition and going out and executing and hitting some shots. You know, it's a rivalry game anyway. It's always a lot of emotion going into that, but a lot of other things going on to this game as well. We mentioned it during the broadcast, you know, all the outpour, uh, outpouring of support for Jordan Banks, everything going around that. So, so a little bit of extra emotion for the team. How do you think they handled that tonight? Yeah, you know, that was the locker room. You know, there's things in life that are a lot bigger in basketball, and this is one of them. Um, and, and it's pretty cool to, to see the both both schools, both communities come out in support of Jordan, uh, a senior who um, is going to fight. He's going to fight, and, and that's that's the way that, that we teach our kids is um, in the face of adversity, you got to stand tall and you got to fight. And I, and I was proud of how we did that. We said we wanted to come out and honor Jordan. Uh, we weren't going to lay down when we weren't playing well. They went up 10 on us in the third quarter, and it was a, a testament to our kids to fight for that cause. And again, in the locker room afterwards, you know, this was fun, but. Remember, there's things a lot bigger in basketball going on, and we're fighting for him. So uh, I was proud of how the guys came together and did that. 
Well, congratulations, Coach. Thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Best of luck in the tournament. I appreciate it. Thank you. Being joined once again by my broadcast partner, it's time for tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out the highlights of all Stolly Hustle Award winners on the WSN YouTube page. And we had some conversations, and when it all came down to it, it was a pretty easy decision. It was, and, and when you talk about hustle, you can't say that for Shawnee without talking about Austin Miller. Obviously, he can get it done in the scoring column. 24 points tonight, got it done from outside, got to the rack. We saw a couple nice dunks as well. but. The big thing for him is he gets it done at the defensive end. He gets on the floor, he gets steals, he gets rebounds, and Austin Miller just leading the charge for Shawnee and an all-around really great effort for these Indians. Yeah, and then you mix in a couple of highlight dunks on top of that one, sends the crowd home happy, a big victory for Shawnee tonight. So that is just gonna about wrap it up for us here at Lapham Gymnasium. I'd like to thank our entire crew back in the truck, working behind the cameras and back at the studio. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. One final time, Shawnee uh, comes away with a big victory, 77 to 60 over the Elida Bulldogs. You've been watching boys high school basketball and have a great night, everybody.